Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. On the last episode, we split the party up and we're starting to tackle the different scenarios. We got Terra's scenario finished up last time. Really short one. Today, we're starting Locke's scenario and we will most likely finish it. So we come in the item shop here and we confront this merchant who calls Locke a thief, which sets him off. He goes ballistic and... An opportunity presents itself because we can steal from this merchant. Unfortunately, this has taken a couple tries. It takes too many. Ah, there we go. Uh, as soon as you steal any item from him, usually the plumed hat, there are a couple of things you can steal other than that. I can't remember what. Nothing important. Oh, yeah, man. Ah, oh, Locke is so sick. Locke is the sickest thief on Earth because he could just take all the clothes off your body in one fell swoop. We get his attire and we make him apologize, even though he's still wearing clothes in that sprite. <laughs> now that we have the merchant's attire, uh, this kid downstairs here will let you get past. He only lets merchants buy. Uh, if you have your normal attire on as Locke, or if you have a uh, different attire on, as we'll see in a sec, he doesn't let you get by. And apparently you aren't strong enough to just push your way past this pint-sized bouncer. Uh, so we can come down this alleyway now, and we can get into another confrontation uh, with a cadet in the green armor. Oh, we did get a little bit lucky there. You could steal either a potion or a high potion. We got the ladder. Not to mention, once again, we rip off all of his goddamn clothes. <laughs> oh, the birthday suit. <laughs> I really, really, really enjoy Locke's scenario for how weird and just totally goofy it is. Uh, so we have that. We have that. Now we can do, whoops, wrong alleyway. I think I'm gonna come up here, left and down. This guy. Uh, we can relieve him of his post, which opens up a new kind of uh, pathway through the town. You can get around in this lower path now, which is handy because now that we have the soldier's attire on, we can't get past the kid. Remember, he only lets merchants buy. And we did all of this so we can get down into the bottom floor of the pub where there's another merchant. Oh no, he called us a thief again. He thinks we're trying to steal his rum. To be fair, we absolutely are. 100%, that's our goal. We've done all this so we can get to the, the bottle on the table next to him. So we get the plumed hat and all of his clothes. So again, we got the initial merchant's attire so we could get past the kid, so we could get out of the house to go into the alley to get the cadet's uniform so we could relieve the guard of his post, so we could get down into the pub basement to get the old man's rum. Uh, here's the thing, if we had, the, the house with a kid in it, if we had gone to a different floor, a different room in that house, uh, we would have found his grandfather. His grandfather would have told us that he wants some cider. And that's what we did, we got him some. Why that's important? Uh, we'll find out. I believe there are multiple ways to get out of the town, which is our current overall objective. This, it may not seem like it, that's going to further that objective. And because we're dressed as the merchant once again, we can get upstairs again. So let's go hand him uh, the rum or the cider. Yeah, the rum. Okay, so there's a secret passage. The old man does not remember what the password is. Son of a bitch. Luckily, I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Uh, the password to the secret entrance that the kid knows how to open up is courage. I believe if you give him either of the other two wrong answers, it just resets you. I don't know if that's pure trial and error. I don't actually remember if you get a hint about the what the right password is. This is just trying to save some time. You have to go through all of that to get the secret entrance opened up. I, I'm pretty sure you can get out of the town without doing all that. It's just a fun way to do it. 
could be mandatory. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, so anyway, this is the uh, the mansion of the richest gentleman in town. We want to head to the one with the hidden staircase. This is the guy who was writing the letter before. Uh, and it was quite obvious that he was writing to the Gestalt Empire, telling them from which direction to attack the town, from which direction we were vulnerable, and now he has a whole lot of regrets. Now that they've come in and occupied the place, we're going to leave our merchant's attire on. And what's going on in here before we leave? Sarah before, of course, she's one of the Empire's generals. Oh, so one of the generals of the Gestalt Empire is getting beaten up in here. What the hell is going on? Traitors, huh? Let's learn a little bit about her. Product of genetic engineering, battle-hardened Magitech Knight with a spirit as pure as snow. Her name is Celeste. One of the portraits that I actually like. Gotta be honest, I'm not as big a fan of most of the portraits in this game. I like Kefka's, I like Celeste's so far. Uh, there's a character named Cyan coming up who I really, really like. That's important. Kefka is planning on poisoning the people of Doma. This is such an integral scene for establishing uh, the ruthlessness of the Empire. I could go for days without sleep. Yeah, I'm right there with him right now. I've not been sleeping great recently. <laughs> but I think this scene is super important because we haven't gotten that much play from the Empire. We've heard a lot about them, haven't seen a lot of what makes them uh, the bad guys in this. And this is not going to be a big nuanced Shades of Grey kind of story. Uh, they are, they're pretty much evil. Use General Slaz, now I'm just a common traitor. Um, with a couple of se uh, of exceptions for people within the Empire. Make no mistake, they are the bad guys. If, if you got me out, you'd never be able to protect me. Uh, this scene, by the way, is actually censored in the GBA version because Square didn't want the game to be rated harshly. And showing a restrained prisoner getting beaten up wasn't a thing that they could get away with easily uh, since the Zero ratings board in Japan formed between the time that the original Super Nintendo version and the GBA version came out. I think... Oh, hold on. Yeah, we get the clock key off of him. Uh, the clock key... Ah, he's just talking in his sleep. Much like Mike. He's Captain Picard. Shit, if I had the wherewithal, I would totally, totally do some kind of ROM hack just to change that fucking dialogue <laughs> to the guard talking about being Captain Picard. Let's put them in the back row. Oh yeah, that's just in the room with the save point. So yeah, I think that scene is rather important. We get a lot of telling, but not a lot of showing uh, just yet. And if you recall from before... This old clock, there was a special interaction with it, but we didn't have the key when we first came in here. So it opens up a special door. Oh, you know what? I was thinking I was going to cut this out, but we have not seen uh, Blizzard yet, have we? Nor have we seen, uh, I think, the Vector Hounds or the Commander, even though the Commander is just a pallet swap of the Cadet. I think he has a couple of somewhat unique behaviors, nothing too, like, special. Yeah, but from here on out, I think we're only fighting, uh, yeah, Iron Armor, Vector Hounds, and, uh, Soldiers. Let's see. Hell yeah! 
and we are going to be running into a lot of those because there is a slight hidden path that it's going to take a little bit of wall hugging to figure out where it is. Uh, luckily, I do know the general area, so it's not like I'm going to be lost down here in the dungeon forever. Though we will take a little bit of damage. Should probably put Locke in the front row just because, uh, really the only the only command I have for him that's going to be of use to me is his attack command. So either along the left or the I found it. There we go. Just had to get no <laughs> right before the floor transition. My right in thinking what the back attack does is swap the rows, so looks like Locke is in the back row and Celeste is in the front, which is the reverse of how I set them up. There we go, get down there. Get down into basement two. Uh, there are two chests down here. One contains this X potion, the other one contains an item. Rather, a piece of equipment. Oh no! Should've gone with my gut instinct, that was a high ether. I'm always so reluctant about using ethers too. <laughs> nope, nope, that's the dead end. At least getting some nice experience off the high encounter rate. Because again, I do believe I'm coming into this slightly underleveled. I think to get these chests, we have to come at this from the other side. One of them has already been looted. And now we get to go all the way back not all the way back to the beginning, uh, but just along here. Think. Oh no, it's right below. Great, we made it out of there. Uh, so about the scene from before, the uh, the the scene where Celeste is chained up. Uh, there's one more detail. We could have snagged another soldier's uniform before going down into that, uh, into that basement. And it changes some things about the scene. Instead of hiding in the rafters for one, Locke stands his ground and, uh, salutes the other two. Oh, and we don't have any magic users, so we're not gonna trigger a Megabolt counterattack. Actually, wait. Oh, now I can't remember if that triggers on any, uh, uh on any counterattacks for the Belmadars. Anyway, uh, he'll salute the other two guards as they come out from, uh, the room Celeste is chained up in. And then when he first talks to Celeste, they reference the Leia rescue scene from, uh, New Hope, with Luke dressed as the Stormtrooper, and Celeste will say to Locke, Aren't you a little short for an Imperial soldier? One in a cavalcade of references. Not sure if we've seen these two, or yeah, these two before. Uh, so we'll leave them in. I'm pretty sure the cave is populated almost entirely with these guys. Uh, the purple ray in the background is quite hardy, and they are capable of inflicting poison on poor Locke here. Uh, aside from that, not too notable. Cartagra. I would really like it if Celeste does not get poisoned, because I'm running dangerously low on MP. In fact, I think I've about... Yep, I've run myself completely dry. I was not playing uh, conservatively back in the dungeon. Did take a couple of fights on that I probably did not have to. No, now is not the time for a high ether. Or a regular one. I actually do not have very many. So just a couple potions. Get slightly topped up. And we're good to go. Uh, we will hit that restorative uh, wellspring somewhere in the caves. So it's just going to be a couple of encounters before we manage to make it to that. Do you hear that? There's something down here with us. Ah, this was a uh, chest path. I 
Oh, there it is again. Sounds like it's gradually getting closer. That's why I hesitated before. I didn't know if it was this far left path or the one in the middle. Well, now I know better. Uh, but we're at the end of the cave, luckily. Finally, they're commenting on it. Oh, no! So we can finally use that recovery spring, and as we try to exit the cave, we're gonna find out what exactly that noise is. It's something coming through the wall. Oh, uh, and we come across the tunnel armor boss fight. Uh, and Celeste is saying that she will draw its magic. No, not that kind of drawing. Not the kind that's reserved for FF8. No, instead, all Celeste is going to do throughout this entire fight is use her runic command that we have not yet seen in action. Uh, and Locke is going to be relegated to attacking. This is the flow of this boss fight. Uh, again, it's a tutorial fight to teach you how that mechanic works. Runic is a weird ability. It absorbs the very next spell that is cast, and it converts it to MP for Celeste, equal to the cost that it took to cast the spell. And the MP restoration doubles if she is weak to the element of the spell. Uh, the part that makes it even more weird is that it will absorb friendly or enemy spells indiscriminately. Uh, also, the tunnel armor can get multiple attacks off, aside from its spell cast. So occasionally, you're gonna have to also heal yourself. But that's the flow of the fight. Attack command with lock, uh, runic with Celeste non-stop, because it's it casts some decently powerful magic at you non-stop, plus it has its other attacks that it's getting off. And if need be, uh, throw a potion on Locke or Celeste, if it even comes down to that. Uh, also, it's really handy, of course, to keep Celeste in the back row because she's all she's doing is runicking. And uh, Locke in the front because all he can really do to speed this up is attack. And he won't take all that much damage. It's not like Ultros where if you're a little bit underleveled or on par even, and you leave everyone in the front row, they take massive damage. Nope. Tunnel armor. Simple, easy, to the point. And away we go. And with that, we are done with Locke's scenario as well. Now we get to Sabin's. Uh, Sabin floated off down the river after he jumped in chasing Ultros down. Sabin's scenario is significantly longer than uh, Terra's and Locke's combined. Oh, and look who it is over by the well, it's Shadow. Now it says he is a merchant, but he's wearing a cadet's uniform for the Empire. Let's separate from my friends, say, hey, can you tell me how to get back to Narsh? So Shadow, oh, that's right, in the pub back in uh, South Figaro, Sabin was not with us. So nobody was there to tell him about, oh, the the uh, the ninja, he's so antisocial and blah, blah, blah. No, nah, Shadow opens right up. But he does say some weird shit, like the Reaper is always behind me. Oh, Assassin, that's what it's called in this version. I think some versions of the game call him the ninja. Am I the clockmaker? Nope. Okay. One, five shucks, maybe even ten years. Clock ain't been working. Okay, well. Totally useless to us. Uh, let's get the hell out of here. What the hell? Oh, I thought he was following me for a sec. Uh, so with Shadow in the party, I don't think there's anything else to do right in this little area. Uh, no, we just came in to pick up Shadow, add him to the party, at least temporarily, who knows. Uh, and I believe we want to head out east. East, and then uh, hook down south. 
Oh, you're new. Oh, that sprite is really, really strange looking. Because its body is angled towards the camera, but its head is cocked to the, to, uh, the left. Or its left. There we go. Mmm, this whimsical ass music. Oh, that's not what I was hoping for. Uh, there, I, I believe there is a special bit of dialogue that exists if you run into the enemies called Nut Eaters with uh, Sabin. Hopefully, we eventually come across that. I think they just exist out here in the overworld. I think they're the big uh, bug-eyed squirrel enemies. We've seen before, but I don't think we've seen them with Sabin. Ah, and the Imperial camp near uh, Doma. Doma, if you remember, Celeste mentioned it. What was it that Celeste said about Doma, though? Something about what Kefka wanted to do. Kefka drives General Leo out of a battalion. He'll probably become the next general. Ooh, is that... Nobody likes Kefka. Everybody hates him. Man, Kefka and Kuja are like my two favorite Final Fantasy villains. It's not surprising. Kuja is... In a lot of ways, a big homage to Kefka. Uh, FF9 is, in a lot of ways, a love letter to the rest of uh, the Final Fantasy series. But I think that's our first name drop of General Leo, who is a fan favorite. Yeah, so Kefka comes out, scolds them, and they go about their business anyway. <laughs> We're about to storm Doma Castle. Good, good, good. Oh, uh, we're about to get into some good shit in this scene. This scene and this part of uh, the scenario. So we have, uh, what, 10 of us here? <laughs> what are they doing? Idiots. All of them, Oh. Makes the Empire look totally fucking incompetent. It makes everybody else that they've conquered seem even worse. Oh, but here we go. Here we go. The battle's not yet lost. A noble warrior of a foreign land. Cyan. Cyan is so dope. And he is going to be our swordsman. Cyan is super dope. So he's going to come out of the castle while the lemmings do whatever it is they're doing in the background, falling down. Trying to scale the castle wall? Uh, and challenge their commander to a duel. Mmm, Bushido. Bushido is something that we will play around with more and I will uh, get into the nitty gritty of how it works, even though I think it's fairly intuitive. For now, we're gonna spam Fang at the captain uh, a couple of times and just win. Fuck, Cyan is so cool. Not the best character in the game, uh, if you're playing to mid-max, but goddamn, he is a cool dude. And with that, bye bye Lemmings. So they're playing for a siege. And with that, I think that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Oh, we should hide. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.